more ahead, but first, many lawmakers questioning why the U.S. would send 16 highly advanced F-16 fighter jets to Egypt, especially since Egypt's new President Morsi has had some very harsh words for America. You may recall Egypt's President Morsi saying that President Obama was very clear when he uttered his empty words on the land of Egypt. He uttered many lies of which he could not have fulfilled a single word, even if he were sincere, which he is not. And President Morsi has said even uglier words for our very close ally, Israel. He reminds his countrymen to, quote, nurse our children and grandchildren on hatred towards those Zionists and Jews and all those who support them. They must be nursed on hatred. The hatred must continue. And today, Senator Rand Paul pressing Secretary of State nominee John Kerry about the U.S. decision to send the F-16s anyway. We've heard President Morsi's comments about Zionists and Israelis being bloodsuckers uh, and descendants of apes and pigs. Do you think it's wise to send them F-16s and Abram tanks? Now, we spoke with Senator Rand Paul a short time ago. Senator, nice to see you, sir. Glad to be with you. What's your view of uh, the United States uh, selling F-16s? Four have been delivered and 10 more to, or 16 more to go in a 2010 deal um, to Egypt. Thanks to a huge mistake. You know, the original deal was made with another leader who was deposed by a somewhat uh, semi-violent revolution. And so I don't think it's a good idea. I think there's a potential that it elevates an arms race and what we give to Egypt, Israel wants more or needs more to defend themselves. And I think there is a risk. President Morsi's had words interpreting calling those who are in favor of Israel, calling them bloodsuckers and apes and descendants of pigs. I'd be a little bit concerned about arming a person who had that kind of language. All right, let's reverse engineer this a bit. In the event we don't, in the event we don't send the 16 F-16s and the tanks to Egypt, what happens? You know, I'm not sure exactly what would happen necessarily. I think the Egyptians would come to us and negotiate with us and say, what kind of behavior would we have to have? And I would say to them, maybe you should protect our embassy. Maybe you shouldn't let hordes of people jump on top of our embassy and burn our flag and chant that to America. And I wouldn't give them money. I would condition money and anything we give to them on good behavior. And I don't think we've been getting good behavior from Egypt. All right, Morsi has said the worst things about Jews. He's also had President Bashir of Sudan recently for a state visit. And let's not forget that Sudan has the Iranian munitions uh, factory that Israel just bombed recently inside Sudan. And of course, uh, they're, they're locked in pretty closely, Iran and Sudan. Um, what happens though, because Egypt does control the Suez Canal, so a tad bit they have our foot on our throat. I'm not for having, uh, saying we have no relations with Egypt. I'm for friendly relations with Egypt, and as friendly as they want to be to us, we should be. But you don't always have to buy friends, and you don't always have to arm friends. And so I'm concerned, and I think they need to prove that they want to live in the civilized world. Within the last year, Morsi was uh, seen at a prayer meeting with a radical sheikh who was saying death to Israel and death to Israel supporters. Also within the last year, Egypt arrested 16 Americans, held them in the country, threatened not to let them leave the country, and when I rattled the cages and said, we may talk about ending your aid, and when other senators traveled there with that message, all of a sudden the Americans were released. There are still Egyptians being held for political trials in Egypt, and I think it's a, a big mistake. They need to show they want to be part of the civilized world, and I would make all aid contingent on that. Why do they need them? What, what, who's their uh, yeah, enemy that they're going to be in a dog fight with? That, that's a real question. And really, for every plane we give them, Israel will say, we need one and a half for every one you give them, and we'll need a little better planes than what you give them. But we're giving them some of the most sophisticated technology in the world that no one else has to offer. No one else can offer them F-16s. I don't think anybody else will. And I think we should be friends and have relations with those who want to have relations with us, including Egypt. And I don't think it, that necessarily means that we have to be giving them sophisticated weapons. How much is President Morsi going, going to want to be friends with us if for instance, we, we aborted this deal on the F-16s, and wouldn't uh, Morsi then try to get similar aircraft or from another country or even buy them from a secondary market of some sort? You know, maybe, but we don't have to buy England's friendship. We have common cause. We trade with China. We don't have to buy China's friendship. We trade with Russia. We don't have to buy their friendship. Trade is a great thing. We can be a great trading partner. But we do have to buy it a little bit because it's very important to us that Egypt keep the lid on the trouble in the Middle East to the extent they can with Israel. We don't want Egypt uh, firing up everybody else against Israel. 
it's also in their best interest to keep uh, things peaceful and to keep down uh, radical jihad and things like that. But my fear is maybe they're going to be part of that. I mean, those statements from the Muslim Brotherhood have not been moderate statements. These are people calling an entire race a descendant of apes and pigs. And so I'm concerned about that. I'm also concerned that these are weapons that could come back to haunt us. And this isn't the first time we've done this. Do you know who the biggest funders of the Mujahideen were? The United States. Who was part of these freedom fighters? Bin Laden. We gave missiles, stinger missiles, and all kinds of weapons to the Mujahideen because we thought they were the enemy of our enemy. In the end, it backfired, supporting radical jihads, something no American would be in favor of. That was our policy for a decade. So we do need to think through giving weapons to people who may well not be our friends. All right, you say giving. We're actually selling them, but we're giving permission for others, American companies, to sell them. It's not, is, it, is it the U.S. government selling it, or is it uh, one of our... We, I think we give them money, and they have to use the money to buy them from U.S. Munich. So the so, people who are making the money actually are a lot of people in make, private business. In private business, who do that? Right, but we give the money to Egypt to buy the weapons. What I always find astounding, though, is that nobody's looking at the connection between President Morsi of Egypt and President Bashir of Sudan, who's a indicted war criminal who has this Iranian munitions plant inside Sudan that Israel had to bomb because the munitions factory was supplying Hamas against Israel. I mean, nobody sort of follow, follows this whole circle. The other thing about foreign and military aid is people think, they say, oh, it's buying friendship. They won't be our friends if we don't do this. Well, guess what? The people aren't the same as the leaders. You can buy leaders friendship, but sometimes the people don't see it the same way. We've given billions upon billions to Pakistan, a pew, uh, uh, research study recently said 74% of them don't like us and think America is the enemy in Pakistan despite the billions we give them. In Egypt when the masses were uprising against Mubarak, do you think those people were happy that the tear gas that was being sprayed on them was from Pennsylvania, bought for with USAID? So really USAID doesn't always buy friendship, it buys leaders who are often corrupt and steal the money like Mubarak but it often angers the people that feel like they're being oppressed by the leaders that we're giving money to. So I think sometimes it backfires. What would President Morsi have to do to make you think it was a good idea to uh, send these F-16s to Egypt? One, I would say that he needs to pledge to protect our embassy, show his ability. I think there needs to be a State Department study saying, are they able to and will they, will they defend our embassy? That would be the first step. And then I would wait a little while. It's a, it's a very new government. I would say we'll reassess this in about six months to a year. And I think that would be a very reasonable policy without saying absolutely they're not getting them, which you're right, might get a bad reaction. But I would condition it on behavior and I would see how they're going to behave. I would say maybe you need to start releasing political prisoners. We need to use our aid as leverage to get things that are good for the people, not only their people, but our people. Dr. Afridi's being held in Pakistan. Why? Because he's a friend to America and an informed and yet we continue to ply the Pakistanis with billions of dollars. Senator, thanks, sir. Always nice to see you. Thanks.